I saw recently in the spirit, and it really surprised me, but I, I probably shouldn't even be surprised by it, but I saw a time coming when you would, we would go to the grocery store with our, you know, our money for the whole week's groceries, and we would only be able to buy two items. Like if you have $100 a week you spend on groceries, you would walk out with two things. Not going to eat very good on two things. Nobody in your household is going to eat very good on two things. So I'm just saying. Okay, the other thing. I cannot shake, and I've prayed about this and prayed about this and prayed about this. He has not given me anything else on it yet. On the other side of that deadly winter, I keep seeing the start of the tribulation period. So I'm just going to tell you. Y'all know who know me, who have followed this ministry for years, know I have never, ever, ever said that, ever. I keep seeing on the other side of this deadly winter, like we just go right into the tribulation. I said, Lord, the sheep need details about this. They can't prepare if they don't know what's coming. And if there's a deadly winter coming, they need to prepare. They need to get ready. We all need to get ready. And I said, is this an icy winter or is this an earthquake event in winter or what is it? You know, what are we talking about here? Please give me some words or give me something. And I've been praying this like every day. And I said, we need to start getting ready. And he showed me right away that only about 50% of the people would even act on the warning when they heard it. So about 50% of y'all that hear this are going to act on this warning and 50% of you are just going to kind of blow it off and go, eh, whatever. I saw very severe consequences for those who don't prepare uh, for what is coming. I saw deaths, I saw near deaths, I saw starvation, and I saw deaths from the cold. Prepare my children for an intense winter comes your way and death rides on its winds. There will be much lack and hunger and need of heat. Your little ones will starve if you do not prepare. Prepare for darkness comes your way. This is not a winter such as you have seen before. This one brings new dangers. I warn you, I warn that you may prepare. Many will not heed my warning and death will claim them. This is a time to walk in much wisdom and prudence that you may be spared from the jaws of death a little longer. Prepare for lack, for hunger, and for cold. Prepare that you may stay warm in this time. Warn your loved ones, a deadly winter comes your way. Okay, you have heard the warning now. It's up to you what you want to do with that. If you want to heed the warning, which I know many of you have the wisdom to do, pray for guidance and start making your preparations. I thought about it, you know, when, when I got that word and I thought about it, and, and because I know what I keep seeing in the spirit and have been seeing for weeks, but I wasn't at liberty to talk about it until he gave me more detail. And I was, you know, knew for sure it was right. And another thing that happened in the last three days is uh, a friend of mine came over and a person she knows well, uh, a very devoted person, told her that she had heard from the Lord that a deadly winter was coming. I am not even kidding you. And when I heard that, I was like, okay, I'm not the only one hearing this. I'm, then this is, this is definitely him. And what she heard... She can't find the message. She's supposed to share it if she finds it. But um, what she heard was that uh, there are a bunch of El Ninos. And I looked up El Ninos because I remember seeing them in weather forecasts. And I don't remember them ever being anything good. And they bring moisture. In the winter, in the, in the dead cold of winter, that is not a good thing. Because that means snow and ice. Okay, which is what I kept seeing. What I kept seeing in my spirit was ice storms and ice storms that locked areas down where there was no power. Where I live on a mountain is a very small town. Um, less than 2,000 people, I think. And when you live in a small town and the power goes out over a large area, they're going to fix the larger towns first because there's more people in them, right? There was one power outage here that was a month or longer. I've, one person told me they were here during one that lasted nine weeks. Please, Lord, have mercy. Another person told me, this friend said she's been through one in the last 10 years that lasted a month. So, 
And when you're in an, uh, an elevated area like this, this is not a very big mountain. It's like 880 uh, feet high or something. It's a real small mountain. But it's still elevated, and the roads are like this when you're coming up here because it's the Magazine Mountains. You go up one mountain and down and then up like that because you're coming into the, the Ozarks. When the roads ice, trucks can't come up here to deliver groceries. And delivery trucks can't come up here to bring your orders from Amazon either. Okay? And fuel trucks cannot come to fill the gas pumps. So now I want you all to think about this. When there are ice storms, they can't come up here, but even if there's heavy snow. But even in the flatland, when there's ice storms, those trucks don't run. In Texas, it's as flat as it can be. But when there's an ice storm, lock it down. Nothing's going. Nothing is going. And there's branches falling everywhere and stuff's going down. Okay, so what happens when the power goes out is if you live like me and you're in an all-electric place, you have no heat. You have no light and you have no heat. So you have no way to cook and you have no way to heat your home. Okay, I did find out from my friend that here the water stays on. Thank you, Jesus. The water stays on. So I don't need like a makeshift toilet, thank God. Because uh, I've never even used one of those. I don't even know what that's like. But sorry, y'all, I'm, I'm pretty sheltered. But um, you have to look at the area that you live in. What do you need? If you, don't have, if you don't have electricity, what all do you lose? And what do you need? What if, what if it goes on for a month? Here's another thing. The flu has started early this year. All the people in the house next door to me already had it. And we had two rounds of upper respiratories before that. So it's going to, and I kept having a feeling, I told two or three people, I said, I just keep having the feeling this is going to be a, bla a bad flu season. I hope I'm wrong. I don't think that I'm wrong. If there's a lot of cold, it's going to get around easier because that's what keeps the virus alive. That's my understanding. I'm no scientist or doctor. But it seems like the colder the winters, the worse the flu is, and you're in enclosed spaces, you know, you're huddling for warmth and stuff like that. If you have a power outage, if somebody gets it, everybody's going to get it. So... That's another thing to keep in mind. Um, so I thought about it and I thought, okay, we're probably looking at an extended power outage. You know, possibly, I pray not, I hope not a real long one like what they've seen here before, but possibly. And I thought, so what if, if I prepare, what's the worst that can happen? I always weigh the pros and cons. The worst that can happen is I spend some extra money and I end up with like some non-perishable food and some candles and stuff that I don't use. The worst thing that can happen if I don't prepare is I could freeze to death on the first night. That's a pretty big difference. So I'm just saying. If you want to prepare, and then I'll close with this. If you want to prepare, you take a word like this and you look at what's coming. This matches what I've seen. What I kept seeing was ice and things shutting down. Like people not being able to travel, not being able to go and get groceries, not being able to get gasoline for their vehicles or their generators. By the way, if you have a generator, those run on gasoline. That's my understanding. I've never, been, I've never run one, so I don't have any idea. But... Um, my understanding is they run on gasoline. So if you can't get gasoline for your vehicle, you also cannot get gasoline for a generator. That's something else to think about. Um, so this word, prepare for an intense winter comes your way and death rides on its wind. Okay, so it's dangerous. There will be much lack and hunger. Okay, so food won't be available. That tells you right there, food's not going to be available. And I think that's going to be because the roads are going to ice and the trucks aren't going to be able to run. That's what I, that's what I think. But I, I'm not that he didn't say that. That's just what I think. And need of heat. Need of heat means you can't get what you need to heat your house, whatever that is. In my case, it's electricity. Um, and the other thing that made me start thinking about this and why I kept begging him for a word is I said, why would the Lord tell me to spend that kind of money to fix somebody else's fireplace? Because he's not going to do that just so I can smile and go, oh, it looks pretty. That's, he's more practical than that. And he knows I'm very practical. I don't like to waste money on anything. And so I thought, why would he tell me to fix the fireplace? And then it hit me. He's telling me because it's going to be a life and death situation. If it were not a life and death situation, it would be like, you know, because the landlord's not going to fix it. Um, okay, this is not a winner like you've seen before. This one brings new dangers. Okay, new dangers. I'm not sure which are the new dangers. He didn't say what those were, and I didn't see what those were. Um, so we'll just have to find out as those happen, I guess. I warn that you may prepare. 
Many will not heed my warning. This is a time to walk in wisdom and prudence and be, be spared. Prepare for lack, for hunger, and for cold. He told you right there what to prepare for. Prepare that you may stay warm in this time. Prepare for lack, hunger, and cold. I'm, the lack makes me think there's going to be some job layoffs or something. That's the only thing I can think of. Or wait a minute. No, wait a minute. There would be lack if the roads are iced and you can't go to work. That may be the lack. Okay. I, I didn't see that. Okay, so that's what we have. I'm sorry this is not better news, y'all, but... Praise God for his mercy in warning us, you know. He could just let us sail into winter and, and that all happen and then we're just stuck in our houses with no way to keep warm and no way to feed anybody and no way to eat. That would be awful. That would be so awful. But he's such a merciful God. He is such a merciful God. I hope that you will take this seriously. I hope that it helps you. And... Um, Pray over the winter. Pray over the people you love because there's going to be a lot of people that are not going to do anything to prepare. Share the message or the word with as many people as you can because if one person heeds it that wouldn't have heard it otherwise, then it may save their life. It may save somebody else's life that they take care of. But spread the word, y'all, because we got to get the word out about this. This is serious. This is serious. I've seen some ugly winters. I remember back when I was married huddling to keep warm and we'd all get in one room my husband and kids and we'd all be in one you know, sheet off all the doorways and try to keep all the heat in one room and I'm pretty sure that little rent house didn't even have insulation and we have one little gas heater and it was not fun it wasn't and the water would freeze up see, well water it lived out in the country the well water froze up nothing worked and ice storm four days you couldn't go anywhere it was pretty miserable thinking about that for a month or longer is just really not very pleasant but I'd rather think about it now and have some of the things that we need to get through it then than not think about it and just go oh that's not going to happen and then it does happen and you have nothing um, as far as preparing let's look at what he told us in that word that he's about the deadly winter he said prepare for an intense war uh, winter comes your way and death rides on its winds okay and other people were warned about the wind too so apparently there's gonna be a lot of wind or high wind or something with this these winter uh, conditions there will be much lack and hunger and need of heat okay so that tells you there will be things you don't have and there will be hunger and uh, people won't have enough heat. Now, I live in an all-electric house. So if the electricity goes out where I live, yeah, that's going to be a problem. And a lot of you also live like in the city. You know, the townhouse that I lived in in Princeton, it was all electric. I would not, as I loved living in Texas, I would not want to be in that townhouse when this winter that he's talking about comes. Because there's no way to heat that. There would have been no way for me to heat it in that particular townhouse. Now... I think that you have to, you know, research, look for prepping sites, prepping, prepper videos, prepper sites. They tell you how to live off grid, how to, like when everything goes down. They know ways to survive. I'm not that person who knows how to do that, y'all. I'm just not. I've camped one day in my entire life. One day. That's it. I, it's just not my thing. I don't know how to do any of that. In fact, a lot of people kept saying, oh, you don't need a, you know, because the Lord told me to fix the gas log fireplace where I live. And they said, oh, you don't need a gas log fireplace. You don't need propane. You need a wood burner. You need to be burning wood. No, trust me, I don't, because I can't build a fire that will last more than five minutes. And I tried for months to learn when I was at the House of Horrors before this house. I just can't build a fire. And I tried to had people try to teach me I just I don't know I'm stupid in that part of my brain or something I cannot build a fire that will last I will freeze to death if I have to rely on that and not only that but you have to remember when somebody is 60 years old I am not that sure on my feet I fall in my house okay I mean I fall up against stuff trip over my own feet I do not go outside when it ices because of that uh, and because my driveway slopes like this I don't go outside when it ices because I will fall and break a hip and you know freeze to death in my yard or be in a nursing home for the rest of my life. 
it's stupid for somebody my age who can't walk well to think they're going to go and gather firewood to keep warm, and especially if they can't build a fire like me. So I'm just saying, the Lord knows what he's doing. When he says, fix the gas fireplace, I'll fix the gas fireplace because he said to do it. That's all I need to know. He said to do that. And a lot of people said, oh, that won't work when the electricity goes out. I researched that, and it depends on what kind of pilot light you have, apparently. And believe me, I will not be spending a dime to fix a gas log fireplace if it is not going to work when the electricity goes out, because that would be useless in this, wouldn't it? Okay, so thank you for your advice, though. I appreciate that you all care enough to tell me, hey, try to stay alive. Because a lot of people are not going to stay alive in this. Okay, he said, there will be lack, much lack and hunger in need of heat. Okay, now, I talked about this in the first video. If there is a lot of ice, the trucks often can't run to fill up the shelves on the grocery stores. Okay, in the grocery stores you go in, if the trucks can't run, especially in some place like where I live that's real remote, the trucks aren't coming up the mountain to fill these, these shelves, y'all, if there's ice on the road. And I wouldn't either if I were them. If it's going to risk their life, I wouldn't either. Uh, hunger, obviously if we can't get groceries, we're going to be hungry. And need of heat, okay? People like me that rely on electricity, that's a problem. If you have a fireplace but you don't have any wood, that's going to be a problem. He said, this is, he said um, prepare for darkness comes your way. That made me think, too, that the electricity was going to go out. And if you, have, if you have ever been in an ice storm, I've been through a lot of them in Texas, when the ice starts building up on the electrical lines, they come down because the ice is too heavy for them, or trees ice up and they fall on the lines and they bring the power lines down. And, you know, crews immediately go out and try to fix that, but there's only so many work crews, too. So a lot of it depends on that as well. There was an ice storm here. I can't remember what year they said it was, um, but it was like in the last 15 years, and it caused like a 16-day power outage or something because they couldn't, they couldn't get it fixed faster than that. And so everybody was in their house, you know, trying to stay warm and, and going outside and gathering firewood and stuff and just burning it in their fireplaces. Okay, this is not a winter such as you have seen before. This one brings new dangers. Now, I don't know what the new dangers are. I don't, he did not say that. He didn't tell me what they were. He said, I warn you that you may prepare. Many will not heed my warning and death will claim them. He showed me that only about 50% of the people would take heed of this warning and actually do something about it. Judging by the mockers and the hateful trolls that have commented on the first video, I strongly suggest it will be at least 50% that won't listen. And God bless them. Y'all, if they're not walking with Jesus, they just don't have any spiritual understanding and they, all they see is some crackpot going, hey, it's going to be a bad winter. And that's the truth. Okay. This is a time to walk in much wisdom and prudence. That means caution and being careful and taking, you know, extra precautions. That you may be spared from the jaws of death a little longer. Prepare for lack, for hunger, and for cold. Okay, right there he told you what to prepare for. Lack, hunger, and cold. Prepare that you may stay warm in this time. Warn your loved ones a deadly winter comes your way. Okay, now... There have been people who contacted me and said, how can I possibly prepare? I don't even have enough as it is. All I can tell you is what I would do if I were in your shoes, okay? If I were in that position right now, and I heard this warning, and God showed me in my spirit that it was a warning that, you know, I really did need to get ready, what I would do is I would cut my grocery bill by 10 15%, however much, and I would take that amount of I would just eat less, and I would take that amount of money, and I would use that for prep for the winter, okay? That's what I would use. I would take that money. And I would just, you know, you either eat cheaper food or you eat less food. This is where having the spiritual discipline of having, from having fasted a lot will really help you. I did a ton, a ton of fasting back in 2009 especially. A lot of fasting. I did one fast of all solid food. I did drink liquid. That's the way he told me to do it. Uh, fasted all solid food for 76 days. I know from that that I can go without food for a long time. I know I can do it. If I have to do it, I can do it. That helps me as I prepare for this the best I can because 
you know, I know I don't have to have a Big Mac and fries every day to get by. You know, fasting really, that pays off. And I never thought about that, you know, when I was going through that. When he told me to fast, and I just fasted until he told me I could stop. And I was hungry. You know, there were times when people were eating food around me, and I was hungry. I mean, you are when you fast. You, you want the food, but you know, you know, you have an anointing on you if he tells you to fast. I don't advise fasting any time where he's not leading you to fast because that anointing of ease won't be there. It's still, you still have to fight, you know, because you want to eat, but you don't have to fight nearly as hard. I fasted one time for like, I don't know, two or three days back in the 80s um, because I wanted to do that to honor the Lord. And there was no anointing on me to fast, and I thought <laughs> I would have almost knocked over an old lady to get a sweet roll. I'm telling you, it was bad. I was so hungry. Anyway, there's a big difference in when he calls you to fast and you tell yourself you're going to fast. That's all I'm saying on that. Okay, so you can take some of what you use now for food and take that and use it for to buy things to prep with. Okay, like whatever kind of... What you have to have when you prep is basically food that does not have to be refrigerated. So that means highly processed, snack-type food, crackers, you know, peanut butter. Peanut butter doesn't perish... Uh, doesn't go bad for a really long time. Things like that, okay? Canned stuff doesn't perish. Okay. I would do that. And especially, especially if you live in an all-electric place, your best source of heat is going to be the clothing you have and your blankets, okay? Flannel sheets on the bed are a lifesaver. They are a lifesaver when you are freezing cold. Uh really thick socks, a toboggan cap, those sweater caps that you just pull down over your head because you lose a lot of heat out of your head if you don't have a hat on. So a hat's really important. That's why you see movies about like the 1800s and stuff. You see them wearing hats, like these funny little sleep caps. They were wearing hats because it helped them to stay warm. I don't know if y'all have ever lived in a house that didn't have central heat and air. I lived in a bunch of them growing up, and I can't even tell you, but I still remember how cold those sheets were when we jumped on top of them. We didn't have no flannel sheets. And it was cold. It was so cold. It was like you thought you were never going to get warm. And that's what this is probably going to be like. I lived in uh, one mobile home when I was married that I remember... One time, I, I think it was just a winter storm. I don't think it was a nice storm. I think it was just a winter storm. But I remember walking down the hallway to go to my kid's room, and the back door had ice on the inside of it because it was so cold. And I was like, that's not good. That's not good. Okay. Now, I'm going to make this is a, a, just a suggestion. Usually what we do when we prep is we go buy the cheapest of everything that we can find. Okay, you buy instant coffee, you buy, you know, the very cheapest you can find so you can buy more of it, right? Okay, that's great for making it go further. But try your prep food. Okay, take that home. If you go buy a jar of coffee for 99 cents and you're a big coffee drinker, take that coffee home, open it up, and make a cup and see if you can actually tolerate it. You don't want to get to a time when you're already miserable because it's dark, you're freezing cold, you have no electricity, you have no internet, and you're already unhappy about all that. And then you try to make a cup of coffee and you're a coffee drinker and you can't even drink it, it's so bad. You don't want that. Okay, so test your food. I had bought some... Um, like some instant soup, and I tried it. It was bad, y'all. It was really, it was terrible. I would have to be on the point of starvation before I'd even think about it. It was bad, and I'm not a picky eater at all, and that was bad. So just try your food. Try your food. Whatever you're planning to buy a lot of, try some before you invest in a bunch of it, just because it will just make it easier for you. Whenever you're freezing cold, having something hot to drink like broth I made the suggestion of bouillon cubes because you can buy a little jar of bouillon cubes and it has 25 cubes in it. Each one of them makes one cup of broth. That is something that's hot to drink when you're cold that has a little bit of, you know, sodium and stuff in it that will just kind of help get you by, you know. And I found out when I was fasting that a little sprinkle of cayenne pepper, you know, I'm from Texas, we put heat in everything down there. A little sprinkle of cayenne pepper, cayenne pepper cuts your appetite. I didn't know that until I did that real long fast. And it also spices your food. So there's little things like that that will help you if you know what they are. 
But, uh, you know, if you buy like two cases of ramen noodles and then you try ramen noodles and you hate them, and that was not what I tried, by the way, and you hate them, you're going to be pretty miserable eating them for the whole, you know, the whole time the storm's going on. That's all I'm saying. And if you just, if you take, take it home and try it and then you go, no, this doesn't work, I would rather have, you know, 50 cent canned soup from the dollar store or something than you know to put the money in 50 cent canned soup. So try your prep food. If you're, gonna, if you're planning on living on it for however long the storm goes on, you need to know that you can eat it. Okay, now, I cannot see yet the end of this, this ice that I keep seeing. Generally, uh, if you see things in the, in the prophetic, you will see the end of it. You'll usually see what happens. Sometimes you can see how it starts. I cannot see how this starts. You can see that, like some of the major points, and then sometimes you'll see the end of it. I can't see the end of this yet, so I don't know if that means it's going to be really long. I don't know what it means. If I see the end, I'll, I'll let y'all know if, I, if that changes. Okay, now I want to tell y'all about two things that I cannot shake. My spirit, I've tried, and I cannot shake these, so I've, I've got to tell you about them, because when I can't shake something, it means I'm supposed to let y'all have this information. It's some kind of a warning. It was like the deadly winter when I kept hearing those two words like a month, two months ago. Deadly winter, deadly winter. I would be walking around cleaning my house, deadly winter, deadly And I was like, come on, Lord, give me some more info or something. Give me something. And finally on a podcast I said, I don't know why I'm getting this, but I'm getting it. And then he finally gave me more on it. Okay, number one. Because I keep seeing this, I believe that the conditions that are going to create the famine in America have already started. Uh, I believe that they started in 2006 with the dying off of the bees, the bumblebees, the, uh, the honeybees. I, I did some research on that, and I found a website that says over one-third of the food we eat relies on pollination by bees, either directly or indirectly. Many fruits, nuts, and vegetables require pollination by bees and other insects in order to yield fruit, and without pollinators, these crops could all but disappear from grocery store shelves. Then came the massive floods earlier this year in our heartland, and those were bad, very, very bad. Um, people who have driven through those areas, and I have a friend who did drive through them, says the crops are almost non-existent. Now those are our wheat and you know corn and whatever. Our grain crops are almost non-existent this year. And the ones that do have crops out, they're real sparse. That is not a good thing, okay? What that means is there's not going to be much crop coming in, which also affects people in other countries because in America, we pretty much produce our own food, and then we take the surplus and we ship it out to other countries, okay? We won't have any surplus the way this is looking, and it sounds like we won't even have enough for what we eat in a year, which means we'll have to start eating what's stored up. And there are people who wrote me and commented or emailed and said that the floods caused some of the silos to, it ruined the grain in some of the silos. That's really bad. That's really bad, y'all. That's acres and acres of grain that is stored up in those silos. Okay. That's very serious. Because I saw recently in the spirit, and it really surprised me, but I, I probably shouldn't even be surprised by it, but I saw a time coming when you would, we would go to the grocery store with our, you know, our money for the whole week's groceries, and we would only be able to buy two items. Like if you have $100 a week you spend on groceries, you would walk out with two things. Not going to eat very good on two things. Nobody in your household is going to eat very good on two things. So I'm just saying. Okay, the other thing I cannot shake, and I've prayed about this and prayed about this and prayed about this. He has not given me anything else on it yet. On the other side of that deadly winter, I keep seeing the start of the tribulation period. So I'm just going to tell you. Y'all know who know me, who have followed this ministry for years, know I have never, ever, ever said that, ever. I keep seeing on the other side of this deadly winter, like we just go right into the tribulation. 
I don't want to see the tribulation. Can I tell you that? I don't want to see it. I don't want to be here for that. I don't want anybody I love to be here for it because it is going to be wicked and horrible. So I hope that we're all taken up. I hope everybody we love is taken up. I really believe we are right at the doorstep of the tribulation. I cannot shake this from my spirit which makes me believe that it's the Lord showing, to me, showing it to me. Because when I get something like that and I can't shake it, I keep trying to, you know, go, no, I don't, you know, and, you know, I try to look at something else or concentrate on something and it won't go, that is him showing me stuff. And it always turns out to be a warning and generally will happen. So, I uh, wish that I had more to tell for y'all. But as you know, the Lord, any detail he gives us, he is also giving the enemy. So he can't tell us exactly what's going to happen. Uh, he tells us as much as he can to warn us. And those who are wise will receive the warning. And those who, whose spirit, who have his spirit, and their spirit bears witness, and he goes, that's me, um, that's me talking to you, they're going to do something about this. Even if you cannot do a lot, do what you can because any preparations you make are going to be better than no preparations when this happens, okay? There are people that posted comments saying that they saw something about, and I don't know if this is true. I'm not saying it. I just said there's somebody else posted it about a snow hurricane or something like that. And I thought, that's something we haven't seen before. That would bring very high winds. And I don't know if that's true. I have not seen that. And I don't know anybody who has seen that. But even if it's blizzard conditions, even if it's just a really bad snowstorm with high winds and you don't have food and, and your heat goes out and stuff like that, there are things that you can be prepared for. You can have whatever you can uh, prep enough to put back for eating or drinking. <clears throat> I personally, I have a friend who said that she was here during the like 14 or 16 day power outage and she said our water stayed on. I said, praise Jesus. But I keep seeing the water not staying on here. I see it being on at first and then I see it not being on. So I'm going to prep for that. And you can prep for water. You know, that's just putting water in jugs and, and put like, um, I think the preppers say put a little bit of bleach or something in them. I've got to research that. But you can uh, look at what winter clothes you have. What do you have and what do you not have or something like that. You do not want to run around in tennis shoes and thin socks or flip-flops for this, okay? In Texas, there are people that wear flip-flops all year long. You don't want to be in flip-flops for this, okay? You want boots and thick socks for this. Um, if, if you can walk on snow and ice safely, then you want boots that have traction. Even if you don't have a lot of money, you can go to a thrift store and pick up heavier items of clothing. You can pick up extra blankets. Um, you can look at what you already do have. And you can make a list. You know, what, what is the cheapest food that I could buy, if, you know, if I put $5 a week or $10 a week? What's the cheapest food that I could put back that would at least help me to get through that? And the other thing you might think about, and I don't know if this will work when the time comes. It's just an idea I had. If you have extra items of some other kind, like I have a friend who makes candles. Or she used to, she doesn't make candles now, she used to make candles a long time ago. And she told me one time that she has a lot of extra, those candles left over. That's something that possibly um, she could barter with in the time coming. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe if she needed food, she could trade someone who needed candles. I, I don't think people are going to be socialized out in the middle of the street, but if you live in a friendly community like I do, that's a possibility at least. You know, uh, where I live, people are very warm and very friendly and probably will help each other if they can help each other. Some of them, some of them won't, but some of them will. And it's possible that you may have extra of something that somebody else needs and you might be able to make it. I mean, I don't know. It's just a thought. In that kind of weather, if the winds are high, I don't think anybody's going to be going outside. But that's, that's really all I have for y'all. I... Um, I hope this helps you. I hope that I, I'm very encouraged by the amount of people who are taking the warning seriously. I am still shocked by how many other people heard the same warning. I'm so shocked. I'm so grateful to God for his great mercy. But he's told so many people. There must have been a hundred people that I've heard from. 
and that have commented that said he told me this too. He told me the same thing. He told me to prepare. He told me to put back food, he, you know, firewood, whatever. So just give it some thought, y'all. I mean, if you ignore the warning, you ignore it. It is your choice. But he is, he's giving a warning for a reason. God is very merciful. He doesn't want us to suffer. Okay? That's all I have for y'all. I hope this has been a help to you. Thanks for listening. Jesus bless you. Y'all have a great week.